the, the final presentation in class, the final project, you couldn't do it on demo disk. Have the life cycle, you know, the whole nine yard. How do they cause pathology in dogs and cats? In us, they do not cause pathology, right? Pathology on the study of diseases. How is that? Here is a mite. I'm putting in agricultural, the um, uh, the scabies. They call scabies in some people. Have you heard of uh, so and so has scabies? That's it. This is the character right there. It's a very small organism. They call scabies. Uh, intense itching, uh, skin parasites, of course. Um, that's that's it. And then exodes. You do have slide of this in the lab. They are the tick, heart tick, which transmit uh, Borrelia burgdorferi, Lyme disease. What happened? Why they call it Lyme disease? Because there is a city in the state of Connecticut called Lyme City. And what happened? They saw a lot of people have arthritis. I said, okay, ah, that's unusual for a lot of people have arthritis. And after they had arthritis, they started developing heart problems. I said, oh God, what is going on? In Atlanta, you all know this, or if you didn't know, Atlanta, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, sent uh, epidemiologists um, as the center of um, CDC. You all know what CDC is. We already showed you slide of the center of disease control, CDC. It's a federal agency, okay? And then wherever there is a disease all over the world, even in the United States, they send epidemiologists. Epidemiologists, it means people who study pattern and distribution of diseases. That's what epidemiology means. Okay, epidemiology means study of not pathology. Epidemiology means study of pattern and distribution, how diseases are being distributed. So they sent uh, from Atlanta, they sent a few epidemiologists to Lyme City in Connecticut, and they find why people have arthritis, and after arthritis, those same people develop heart problem. They went and took a blood sample from people, and they saw a lot of them have this bacteria in their blood. This is the name of the bacteria, guys. This is the name of a bacteria, Borrelia burgdorferi. And then they said, okay, where did the bacteria came from? Somebody like Amna would ask that. Wow, what the heck? Where did the bacteria come from? Then they went and searched it and searched it and searched it and they found that those people who have this bacteria have been bitten or they already have a tick on their body. And the tick, where the tick come from, that was easy, they come from deer. So, the deer had the bacteria, they, uh, they had the uh, bacteria, the tick is acting like a biological vector, take a blood meal from deer, and then find a human, jump on human, and take a blood meal on human, and of course, while he's transferring, while, while he's taking a blood meal from human, is transferring these bacteria into human. So, that was the end of it. Nowadays, and you know, some people argue with me, I highly recommend, if you are bitten by a tick, do not take any chances, go ahead and take antibiotics. Don't even listen to your doctor. I had one student one semester said, that's news to me. I mean, I've been bit by a tick. And I went to the doctor, the doctor removed it. And then make sure a uh, physician moves it. Do not use the lighter. Some of you sort of lose your lighter and the animal falls off. No, you gotta take the capitulum, the mouth part, all of the bacteria in the mouth part of the tick. So when you remove the tick, make sure you remove the mouth part too. That's why you gotta go to a clinician, not your friend. Okay, so, and then ask them for antibody. They said, no, you don't need it, take it. Okay, because you don't know that tick had the bacteria or not. It's better to be safe than sorry and come down with Lyme disease. Okay, that's what from there on we call it Lyme disease because of the city of Lyme in the state of Connecticut. Am I making some sense? Everybody, I hope you know in the exam you don't put this one as a, I don't know, 
the name of the arthropod. Or whatever. I put different choices, but this is the bacteria that cause Lyme disease. Anyhow, Yermo Center, another one, Rocky Mountain spotted fever uh, or tularemia. Guess where this was first discovered? Rocky Mountain. This one was first discovered in Lyme City in Connecticut, which they have uh, mountains of lime, and people, most of the people going there and works on those uh, mine, uh, lime mines. But anyway, uh, tularemia is another disease. I'm not going to go into each one of these diseases, but Lyme disease is important. Uh, Bufilia uh, annulatus cause your Babesia. We already talked about Babesia at the beginning of semester, which is a protozoa, right? This is a bacteria. Protozoa, which cause your babesiosis, uh, takes us cattle for uh, fever, red water fever, the cattle. Of course, we human can get this, but it's a different babesia than uh, the babesia in human. Uh, is similar to malaria. Remember that a lot of doctors misdiagnose babesia with malaria because on the microscope they are kind of similar, but a trained eye can say it. This is not a malaria; it's a babesia. Okay, uh, so how this gave his life cycle. So uh, here we go, different uh, things uh, from CDC, X to this life cycle. Uh, already talked about most of these things, so I'm not going to go ahead uh, and uh, demo center, uh, which is your Rocky Mountain spotted fever, Babesia, uh, Texas, and we human, as I said, we human get it. It's not only in cattle. And these are different life cycle, and that's where uh, Subphylum chelicerata. All spiders are really uh, dangerous. Most people fear spiders without uh, good reasons. Um, uh, are they spiders really dangerous? Spiders are uh, uh, tame uh, creatures who are allies of human in our uh, battles against insects, pests, American uh, tarantula. Actually, it's not that dangerous. Uh, however, some tarantulas, black widows, and uh, uh, or, you know, their venom is neurotoxic, or we talked about that. Uh, brown recluse spiders have hemolytic venom uh, that destroys the tissues around their eyes. And uh, some Australians and South American spiders are most dangerous and aggressive spy uh, species, species with most of the toxic venoms, uh, which are intense pains and uh, neurotoxicity. Here they are. That's a, uh, I ordered a, 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 a black widow. Uh, for you guys for the lab, we do not have it. Uh, I don't know when that comes, maybe next semester or so, but that's what the black widow look like. The, the dead giveaway is that red spots in the back. Okay, so you see a spider, a black spider with the red spots in the back. Um, stay away, just crush it right away. Okay, so, but the thing is, we adult human maybe can handle it, but it's a baby's. You yeah, have four or five years old, two years old, one year old at home. That's where it's a no-no. Be careful with them both, uh, the uh, recluse and black widow. These two uh, are, uh, you know, kind of, you have to be careful with the kids. Yourself too, yeah, but uh, it's a kid. Okay, uh, anyhow, subphylum so crustacean, I think that's where we start. I'm going to pick it up on uh, next Tuesday. Today is Tuesday, sir. Is that right? 